Hey, what's up everybody? So I just got back from watching the movie Brad's Status and I wanted to do a quick little movie review of it. And so I'm going to start off by giving you guys a big spoiler alert. I'm going to spoil the whole movie right now. So if you care about spoilers, don't watch this review. Go watch the movie first if that's something you care about. Okay, so on the first of this month, I got this movie pass card movie pass is a service i really love um this is not a paid promotion but this is just something i really love you pay ten dollars a month for this card and you get to un you get to watch unlimited movies at the theater and so this is the 26th of the month and this was the 14th movie i've watched with this card so far um and out of those 14 movies i think this is the one i liked the most brad's status was just a movie I really related to and um, really just enjoyed. I think I really liked the movie because I went in with such low expectations and the movie just really exceeded those expectations. Um, but I don't think it's because it was a particularly amazing movie. I think it was mainly because I related to the main character so much. The other movies I watched weren't necessarily bad. I just didn't relate to the characters. That I, um, I saw the movie Home Again, and I didn't really relate to the main character because I'm not a single mother. I watched the movie Girls Trip with this movie pass, and I didn't really relate to the characters that much because I'm not a black woman. And out of all the movies I saw, this was like the, one of the most original movies and um, most original plots that I thought personally. I saw the movie Mother. That also had a very, that also had a very original plot, and it was very unique, but... The movie Mother I didn't love because it was very confusing and because there was so much symbolism to it. Um, Brad's status, like there wasn't much symbolism, they just explained exactly what was going on in the movie. So okay, here we go. Ben Stiller is the star of the movie, he plays Brad. He's like a middle class white guy and he's got a stable job and he's sort of unhappy because he sees uh, his friends from college. They've moved on in life. They're like very wealthy now. He sees them on the news and he sees stuff they post to social media and they're having a lot more success than him. Like they're flying around in private jets and Brad is just living an average life. Like he has no problems paying his bills. He's, you know, a middle class house. He has a car. He, he goes on little vacations. He's just like an average guy, but he's unhappy because he's comparing himself to his friends and I kind of related to that like I'm sort of in a similar situation like I have no problem paying bills I um, I'm not gonna starve to death anytime soon I have no problem paying my rent or anything like that sometimes I do compare myself to uh, some of my friends from high school and college and have a little bit of jealousy because of stuff I see them post on um, Facebook and other social media stuff and just have jealousy comparing my life to theirs sometimes so Brad in the past he wanted to help the world he worked at he works at a nonprofit organization and now he kind of feels like he should have focused more on uh, acquiring wealth in his life and this is also something I kind of relate to and I'm not sure if it's that I don't really care about helping people anymore or if it's just that I feel kind of jaded and I kind of feel like putting effort into helping people is meaningless in the grand scheme of things like when I was in college I would always help people at like soup kitchens I would volunteer at soup kitchens all the time and try to do stuff to you know to help other people like volunteer all the time now I kind of relate to him because it sort of just feels meaningless doing all that stuff and it might sound bad like something like, I might sound like a bad person saying that but it's just the truth um, just in the grand scheme of things doing stuff like that kind of feels meaningless nowadays and throughout the movie Brad kind of goes back and forth between being jealous of his friends and appreciating what he has and um, you know, it kind of shows that our success is relative. Like, for example, look at subscribers on YouTube. I've got about 20,000 subscribers on this John Drinks Water channel. So, 
if I compared myself to PewDiePie, who has tens of millions of subscribers, I kind of look insignificant. But um, if I compare myself to a channel with 100 subscribers, um, you know, I, I should feel successful comparing myself to them. And this is kind of something that Brad does in the movie. He, he constantly compares himself to people who are having huge amounts of, of success. Instead of appreciating what he has, he gets unhappy because um, he doesn't have what other people have. And I think that's something that most people struggle with sometimes, just being jealous of other people. And I don't think it's necessarily something we can control. Like, it's just, it's not really a choice to decide to not be jealous of other people. Um, there are four types of conflict when it comes to story. There's man against man, man against nature, man against self, and man against society. In this movie, it's just man against self and man against society. Which again, I relate to because my own struggles in life are most often man against self and man against society. Like, I don't really have any struggles and conflicts in my life where it's me against other men or me against nature. Like, I don't fight tornadoes or hurricanes or, you know, there's no assassin coming after me. Like, like a lot of movies have stuff like that. Um, the struggles in my life are mostly just you know, me against myself and me against society. Um, and th those, those are the struggles in this movie, which is like a big reason I related to it. Um, a big concept of this movie is, you know, discussing what it is to be a friend. And near the end of the movie, he has a dinner with one of his friends and like he kind of questions, am I really friends with this guy? What is a friend? Merriam Webster defines friend as somebody who is attached by affection or esteem, but it also defines it as somebody who is not hostile. So is everybody that I'm not hostile with a friend? <laughs> like, does that mean I'm, does that mean I'm friends with 99% of the people in the world. It also defines it as just a favored companion. There's so many like vague descriptions of a friend in Merriam-Webster, but what, what does a friendship mean to you? You know, leave a comment and, and try to give me a definition of what friendship means to you. Like, on the website MySpace, the guy Tom was automatically friended with everybody who joined MySpace. So Tom had like hundreds of millions of friends, but are they really his friends? When is somebody a friend? If if you haven't talked to somebody in five years, like there are, you know, people I went to college who I considered friends and I haven't talked to them in five or 10 years, are they still my friend? Um, I think that's kind of debatable and it's a topic that the movie brings up. What about, what if it's been 25 years or 50 years and you haven't talked to a person at all, are they still your friend? Um, like, I think in the movie, he literally asks the guy that he hasn't spoken to in about 10 years. He says, like, what are we? Like, what is this relationship? Um, because if you're really friends with somebody, don't you kind of keep up with them? If you were, if you were friends, wouldn't you want to keep contact with them? And, um, you know, there was this one time a few years ago that I had, like, I think 500 Facebook friends and I kind of noticed a lot of these people I haven't talked to in many years. So I went through my Facebook list and I unfriended everyone that I haven't talked to in over two years. And so I did that. And then last month <laughs> I noticed that somebody else did that to me. And I, I kind of, um, you know, felt bad about that, that somebody else unfriended me. So I kind of wonder, are all those other people that I unfriended because I haven't talked to them in years, did I upset them when I did that? Does that make sense? Like, maybe they still considered me friends and they just, you know, haven't ta talked to me recently. So it's kind of something I think about. And um, I hope that my unfriending those people didn't hurt their feelings. Here's another question. Does friendship have to be mutual? If, if I consider Bob 
to be my friend, but Bob hates me? Um, are we friends? <laughs> because there are some people in your life who, um, you kind of just have to be around. Like, maybe you work with them or go to school with them. And so you might not even know that they don't like you. So you might consider them to be a friend, even though in their mind they hate you. So does, does friendship have to be mutual? Um, you know, there was this, this one friend from high school, Colin, who I, I kind of considered him a friend, but I think that may have just been because we were in the same group of friends. So this, this group of friends all hung out together, had lunch together and, and stuff like that. And, um, the movie brings up this idea of, are you really friends with somebody? Or is it just because you're friends of their friends? And so this guy, Colin, I thought he was my friend. And then I found out on the website Google+, Plus, he completely blocked me on that website. Um, I found this out in 2012. Like, he was a suggested friend. And so I went to his page, and the page says, Colin has blocked you. So... I'm assuming he just doesn't like me. I mean, why else would he block me? Um, and I graduated high school in 2007. I have not talked to Colin since 2007. We haven't seen each other at parties or really had any contact with each other at all. That was in 2007. And then in 2011, Google Plus was started. <laughs> so this, this guy, Colin, went out of his way to block me on Google+, Plus, just basically out of the blue. I guess he didn't like me that much that he thought um, I, I needed blocked, even though I haven't had any contact with him. So I think that's an example of being friends with someone just by association, just because you're in the same group. Um, this kind of feels like I'm rambling, so let's move on. <sighs> yeah, during a meal, Brad says, like, what is this? Like, are we friends? And eventually he just walks out of the whole the whole meal with this guy. Um, but during the meal, near the end of the movie, they have a conversation about their other friends, and Brad finds out that the success he thought his friends were having wasn't actually true. Um, his one friend, he thought he was super rich and flying around in jets, and then during this meal, he found out that his friend um, was actually close to being bankrupt and having lots of financial problems and health problems. And his other friend, he thought like he was like a playboy. And um, it, it turned out that he was like an alcoholic and drug addict and had all these other problems in his life. But he didn't realize that by only looking at his, um, his social media stuff. And... I, I do get jealous a lot, and that's something I related to in this movie. Sometimes of things that I don't even want. <laughs> like, sometimes I see pictures on Facebook of um, friends getting married. And I don't even want to get married. I really don't. But it, like, it's something I don't even want, but I see friends doing it. And I get jealous of it just because of the status symbol of it, really. Which is the title of the movie, Brad's Status. Um... And it might not even be something that you want. Like, giving a speech at a friend's wedding, being the, being the best man at a wedding, that's not even something a normal person should want to do. Like, there's nothing enjoyable about being a best man at a wedding, but it's something you can be jealous of just not being asked to do. The movie, I think it had about 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, which seems pretty accurate. But I looked at some of the, the negative reviews, and a lot of the people giving this movie negative reviews were actually talking about how much they disliked the character instead of discussing how much they disliked the movie. <laughs> um, one of the reviews on, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes said that the lead character was a jerk. And this makes me wonder, like, should they be giving the movie a bad review just because they don't like the main character? People in real life have flaws. Doesn't that make the movie more realistic? because he's flawed, and doesn't that make him more human? Like, should you not like a movie because the lead character has issues? I think most movie reviewers 
don't want to admit that they relate to the main character because the main character is so jealous of everyone around him. And if you admit that you relate to that character, you're admitting that you're jealous of other people, which is a quality that most people consider bad. So I think a lot of the movie reviewers just don't want to admit that because, again, it's it's admitting that they're um, jealous of the people around them too. Throughout the movie, the main character, Brad, he sort of is jealous because he imagines what um, the other people are doing, which is something I think we all do. Um, with, so with social media, you only get a snippet of everyone else's, else's life. You only get like a highlight reel. And so you have to kind of fill in the blanks with your imagination of what else is going on in that person's life. Some people might be jealous of me if they only saw my Facebook posts. Like when I post to, to Facebook, it's good stuff that's going on in my life. Like I post pictures of me, like my vacation around the world. I post pictures of that. When I'm on TV for videos I made, I post that stuff. And it's only, it's really only the highlights in my life. So some of my friends on Facebook that don't talk to me very much, they might think I'm doing, you know, really well. And they might be jealous of me because of what they imagine my life is like. Sometimes I have to donate plasma for money and sometimes I'm depressed but I'm not going to post that negative stuff to Facebook uh, because I don't want to be a downer and just always post negative stuff. Um, and I, I want to look successful. I, I guess that's the reason why I uh, don't post negative stuff to, to Facebook. But this YouTube channel is all about honesty. So I don't mind saying that stuff. It's negative in my life on here because it's just giving you a real idea of what my life is actually life actually like near the end of the movie brad talks to a girl in a bar for several hours and just as they're drinking and he tells her the problems in his life how he's jealous of other people and him not being successful and um comparing himself to the people around him the girl at the bar her response to all of his issues is to tell him how good he has it and how he should be happy because at least he's not starving to death like the girl says oh there's people in this in these other countries who don't even have food. You should be happy. These aren't not real problems. But does that mean we should never be unhappy? We should. Does that mean that our problems are not real? Should everyone on earth be happy just because somebody else has it worse? Like, should we all experience schadenfreude? Like, getting pleasure from other people being unhappy? You know, imagine you tell a friend that you were punched in the face don't you expect them to, like, have empathy for you being punched in the face? This girl's response at the bar would be like your friend hearing that you're punched in the face and saying, well, at least you weren't stabbed. Like, <laughs> you being punched in the face is a real problem, even though your problem could have been worse. Other people having it worse than you doesn't make your problems go away. I, I, I kind of, at the same time, understand where she's coming from, like, I guess having a positive attitude and, and thinking that stuff works for her. But I also relate to him, like, being annoyed by her response because it doesn't make his problems in his life go away. At the very end of the movie, Brad goes to a concert and hears music. And I guess it, it kind of erases the jealousy in his mind and uh, makes him forget about the, the problems in his life. And that's also very true. Um... Jealousy of other people is only temporary and distractions in your life can make jealousy go away. People's moods are not constant throughout their life. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're unhappy. Distractions can make you feel happier. And um, in this movie, it was music that made him forget about his problems. But music is not the only distraction. Just going, going to a movie could be a distraction. Eating a good meal could be a distraction and make you just stop thinking about your problems i mean really anything in your life and um the very end of the movie ended basically just going to black the the movie was about his son trying to get into colleges i mean that was like the subplot of the movie and the end of the movie didn't really resolve any of these problems it didn't explain if he got into college or not but i don't i don't think anybody watching the movie cared like i don't think they were watching to find out what college his son got into um they were watching because the real plot of the movie was Brad's jealousy towards um, everyone else in his life. And um, 
that was resolved by him going to hear some music and, and his jealousy going away. And so, there you go. I give the movie a thumbs up. Some of the reviewers actually, like, they made it sound like they hated the movie. So I guess it's kind of divisive, and I guess it, it's just because those reviewers didn't, um, didn't relate to the character. So, there you go. That's my review. Thanks for watching. I don't know, I just thought that it would be cooler. You know, uh, don't be so judgmental, Troy. Hmm? You've been living in a bubble, remember that. Okay, so don't go judging people living in the real world until you've actually been out there yourself, okay? Okay, but you asked me a question, and then I just said that it wasn't what I expected. No, you said it wasn't what I expected.